Hey guys, it's John here, and welcome back to the channel where I explore the microcosmos of sea monkeys and other instant pets. In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing and doing a review of one of the rarest and most coveted vintage sea monkey tanks of all, the Space Shuttle Expedition Kit. This novelty tank design was released in 1998 to commemorate an experiment where sea monkey eggs were flown into space with astronaut John Glenn aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery. This kit is one of the most elaborate sea monkey sets ever sold, but due to its higher price point, it wasn't particularly well stocked by retailers, even for the short time that it was in production, which makes this kit even more difficult to come by these days. It took me a few months of searching before I was lucky enough to see this one pop up on eBay, still unused and in its original box. I did have to pay a pretty penny for it though, 250 US dollars, which is the most expensive sea monkey item I've purchased so far. No regrets here though. This is one of my favourite novelty tank designs, so I'm super excited to finally open it up with you guys today. I spoke to a good friend of mine, Todd Machen, to get some inside info about the history of this product. He's an avid sea monkey collector, and has worked closely with the sea monkey company as an illustrator for many years. He was also involved in the development of this tank too, so he's been an invaluable resource in getting some of the great information about these vintage sea monkey products. According to Todd, the Space Shuttle Expedition Kit was the brainchild of the dynamic duo of Harold von Braunhut, the inventor of sea monkeys, and George Adamian at Exploratory. It was the 40th anniversary of the Sea Monkeys brand, and they wanted a way to draw attention to the Sea Monkey cysts making their space voyage with John Glenn, which were remarkably unaffected by their journey, and were still viable nine days later upon their return back to Earth. The Space Shuttle Expedition Kit was also a marketing device used to draw attention to the Sea Monkeys brand and their new products which were being released at the same time for the anniversary. This piece of promotional material shows some of the other newly released sea monkey items, such as the Penquarium, a portable pet device which you could use as a pen and also temporarily house your sea monkeys, as well as the well-known Aquarium Watch, a real LCD watch that you could put your sea monkeys inside of to carry around for a few hours. This box isn't in the best condition, but the tank itself looks perfect. I really love the illustrations on here. On the right hand side there's a sea monkey astronaut doing a spacewalk off the shuttle. I recently spoke to Gregory Bevington, who was the art director for Exploratory during their Sea Monkey days. He oversaw the packaging design of many products, including this kit. Gregory told me that the late David Dees was the artist who produced this wonderful illustration. David was an incredible artist, but also quite a controversial figure during his latter years. There's a great mini documentary here on YouTube which I'll link in the description for those of you interested in learning more about him. It seems like the team at Exploratory put a lot of thought and time into this box art, and it really has paid off. The back of the box features a large photo of the incredible tank itself. Up here it says, The most amazing life pets in the galaxy. Amazing life sea monkeys hatch in seconds, you can live for years. I'm not really sure where this claim has come from. In my experience, healthy brine shrimp can live only for a few months at the most. Perhaps a colony can be sustained for years, but not individual sea monkeys. It says these space traveling sea monkeys hatch, swim, grow, do tricks and even mate in the near gravity free environment of the space shuttle aquarium. For real life adventure, recreate the amazing life sea monkeys that orbited Earth. I know these things are quite fanciful, and intended to capture the imagination of children, but it needs to be said that a lot of these claims are a little exaggerated, but I do appreciate good marketing. I do like that this kit shows a photograph of a real brine shrimp. It's not too common to see that on sea monkey kit boxes, and it really is a great picture too. In the bottom right hand corner we get an idea of what's inside. Water purifier, sea monkey eggs, growth food, living plasma 3, a feeding spoon, instructions, and a sea monkey life insurance policy. I had to get a friend of mine to send this tank to me over from the states, and sometimes New Zealand customs can be a little funny with importing sea monkey products, so I asked them to remove the original packets from this box for me, so that I didn't have any trouble getting it into the country. Fortunately I have a fresh sea monkey starter kit here, so I can begin this colony today. Now any good collector knows that if you want a rare item to hold its value, the last thing you want to do is remove it from its original packaging. But my aim with getting these rare sea monkey items isn't to collect them, but rather to make these video reviews, so you guys can get a chance to experience them in some way too, so it's time to open it up. This box is already falling apart in places, so it's not too hard to get inside. There's a hidden message behind the tank of the packaging in here. It looks like it's basically a disclaimer telling you not to play with the shuttle when it's filled with water and sea monkeys, because they'll spill everywhere. I mean, that is kind of obvious, but I guess kids have been known to do stupider things. The original manual in here is absolutely awesome. It shows that this tank has an internal light that takes two AAA batteries, which I'll be putting in soon. The rest of the manual is basically just instructions on how to set up your tank, and some maintenance tips. The illustrations here are gorgeous, they really went all out on these. You can even see the small packet illustrations, which feature the vintage style sea monkey pictures. Looking at these always gives me a deep sense of nostalgia. The back has a life insurance policy, which is actually really funny to read through. Feel free to pause the video here if you fancy a good laugh. And now for the tank itself. 
It's obviously modeled off the NASA Space Shuttle Discovery, and as far as I'm aware, this is the only white tank that Sea Monkeys has ever produced. If you ignore all of the additional white plastic, the tank itself is actually very similar to a regular ocean zoo, down to the details in the plastic substrate at the bottom of the tank. The nose of the shuttle is a little air pump that allows you to aerate your tank through the plastic tube inside, which we can remove by taking off the tank lid like this. This also lets us take out the little orange sea monkey astronaut too, which is my favourite part of this whole kit. I mentioned earlier that my friend Todd Machen was involved in the development of this tank, and he was actually the one who designed this little guy. Here you can see some of Todd's original drawings for the astronaut, as well as the first prototypes that were made up. I think this came out great, and adds another really unique element to this product. The graphic on the interior of this tank is perhaps the only part that I'm not a huge fan of. It's made to look like the inside of a space shuttle, but I imagine the mid-grey colour will make it difficult to see your sea monkeys clearly. I would have preferred if they had just gone with the plain black colour instead, or even an open back design, but at least the internal light will help out a little in that regard. Now before I set this tank up, I want to bring to your attention an image I found on the Sea Monkey Clubhouse Facebook group, posted by a fellow Sea Monkey collector by the name of Dan Pays. This was a prototype tank that never went into production. It's called the Geo Explorer, and was also modelled off the Space Shuttle, but it was never released due to the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster in 1986. In many ways this prototype was a precursor for this Space Shuttle tank, and you can see the clear similarities. There are some key differences though. Obviously the colour has changed, but the wings of the aircraft are also different as is the back of the tank, which features a clear porthole. I kind of wish they'd kept this feature, to allow a little more light to get in. Alright, it's time to finally test this tank out. I'll start off by adding in 12 ounces of distilled water. There's no fill line on this tank, so I'll just take it a couple of centimetres from the top. Next I need to add in packets number 1 and 2. If you've used distilled water, it's not necessary to wait 24 hours in between these steps, so I'm just doing them both at the same time. To dissolve these salts I'd usually use a pipette or aqua leash to mix up the water, but since this tank has a built in bubbler, it should be able to do the job instead. I'm really impressed that after 25 years of sitting in this box, the pump is still working. It's important to aerate your sea monkey tank regularly, so having this tool built in is pretty cool. And there it is. After a quarter century of waiting, this sea monkey space shuttle is finally ready for its first astronauts. Now I just need to wait for them to hatch. Usually I'd put my tank on a windowsill that doesn't receive any direct sunlight, because in my experience that's the best way to kickstart algae growth. But I've seen some pictures online showing that this tank turns quite yellow if it gets left in the sun, and ideally I'd like to keep it nice and white. So I'm going to put it on the shelf instead with a heat mat to keep it nice and warm, and some purple grow lights to promote the growth of some phytoplankton. I'll check back in with you guys in 2 or 3 weeks from now for an update on how things are going. It's been a few weeks now since I shot that initial tank setup segment, so I'd like to give you guys a little review of how things have gone. You can see that I have plenty of sea monkeys swimming around, so overall things have gone well. I've been really surprised with how much algae has been growing in here though. I was initially concerned that because this tank is closed off at the back, it can't let in too much light, which would likely hamper algae growth, but to my surprise it's done really well. The algae is well established, and the sea monkeys have turned green which shows that they're grazing on it. One downside to this tank though, is that viewing sea monkeys is quite challenging. The grey background really does camouflage them a fair bit, so it's difficult to watch and appreciate them swimming around. I added the AAA batteries in here to get the internal red light working. It's easy to turn on and off with this small button, but the problem is that it's very dim. The room needs to be completely pitch black to even see that the light is on, but it is kind of cool to use at night. I just wish that it was significantly brighter, though if it were I assume the batteries likely wouldn't last too long, so it's a bit of a catch-22. I'd love to see a Sea Monkey tank with a plug-in USB light one day. That way it could be stronger and you wouldn't have to worry about batteries, and you could just leave it on all the time. I've come to really appreciate the built-in bubbler tool in here too. I'm someone who advocates using a permanent airline in sea monkey tanks, because I think it helps a lot with raising newly hatched babies to adulthood. But for those who don't have an air pump, daily manual aeration is important, and so the built-in bubbler is useful, and its novelty makes it fun to use too. It appears to have six holes where the bubbles are supposed to come out, but for me only one or two of them really seems to work consistently, so perhaps it's not exactly what they had intended, but it does still work. There are two small gaps on the side of the lid too which allow for air circulation, but they're also large enough to accommodate an airline if you did want to put one in here. They also make it possible to slide in the feeding spoon, so you can feed them without taking off the tank lid, which wouldn't normally seem like a big deal, but because of how large the lid section is, it's actually really useful. So while in many ways this isn't my favourite tank from a practicality perspective, it is a lot of fun, and at the end of the day that's what it's been designed for. The concept and artistic design behind this is definitely one of my favourite Sea Monkey kits. For so many years this tank felt like an unattainable enigma to me, so I'm glad I was finally able to share it with you today. Thanks again to Todd and Gregory for your help with the history segment of this video. It would have been incomplete without your valuable contribution, so it's much appreciated. 
Thank you for coming with me today on this special cosmic journey into the microcosmos of sea monkeys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. To those of you interested in getting a sea monkey kit of your own, I've put an Amazon link down in the description with a bunch of affordable tank options and some great accessories that will help you raise a colony of healthy space-faring sea monkeys. If you have any sea monkey related questions, you're always welcome to ask those down in the comment section below. I have a few more of these rare sea monkey tanks that I'd like to make video reviews on, so let me know what you want to see next, the Explorer Sub or Robo Diver, and I'll catch you in the next one.